Hey everyone, last week I published a video about React's cache function. And as I was editing that video, I kind of realized that there was two different videos. Uh, the first video was this 10 minute video about how to use cache. And the next 15 minutes were about using cache to preload or prefetch data. And that's basically gonna be this week's video. It's gonna be part two of how to use cache. Okay, let's come back over to our app over here and we are gonna create a new page. Let's call it articles.page and uh, let's just get started and say hello. Then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna visit articles. Okay, let's get this page displaying the current user's name. And then up here, uh, we will load the current user and we're gonna import this function. And on this page, we are gonna build something that resembles a news site. Uh, we are gonna have subscriptions and if you're a subscriber, you're gonna get access to premium articles. So let's go ahead and get that started. I wanna come over here and uh, under Hello Bob, I wanna render a component called premium articles. And now we need to define that component. So we'll make a new async function. And uh, in this function, we are gonna load some articles. Actually, we're gonna await this because this is gonna be an async function. And now let's go ahead and let's define load premium articles. So uh, async function, load premium articles. And uh, inside this function, uh, we're gonna do what we did before. We're gonna await a new promise that takes a second to resolve. And then we are gonna return some premium articles. So uh, let's see what Copilot gave us. Kind of some weird titles here. Uh, let's do an article called uh, the best article. And then here, uh, let's just do another article here. All right, we've got our uh, premium articles here. Let's go ahead and actually use them inside this premium articles component. So here we will return, let's do a UL, and uh, we're gonna map over every article and print the article's title. All right, there we go. We see our uh, two articles here. Now, I don't know about you, but every time I render a UL, I wanna make it look like a bulleted list. So we're gonna use a uh, list disk over here, and we'll give it some left padding. And finally, let's go ahead and let's add some spacing to the top. All right, here we go. We've got our hello current user, and then we render all of the premium articles. But remember, we wanna make this a subscription website, and we don't just wanna display the premium articles to everyone. We actually wanna check your subscription status, and if you're a subscriber, only at that point do you get access to the premium articles. And so we are gonna come up here, and we are gonna load uh, Bob's membership level and we're gonna pass in the current user ID. And now we need to write this uh, load membership level function. So let's come down here to where we fetch the premium articles and we will do another function called load membership level. It's gonna take a user ID, it's gonna wait for a second, and then right here, uh, we're gonna do something funny. We're just gonna say, if user ID equals one, uh, we'll return premium, otherwise we'll return free. And if we come back over to our index page, uh, Bob, has ID one, so he is gonna be a premium user uh, because his ID matches here. Okay, and now up here, let's do a new paragraph that shows the user's membership level. All right, here we go. Hello, Bob, your membership level is premium. And now that we have the membership level, we can uh, wrap our premium articles component inside a check. Otherwise, we're just gonna display a little message here that says, um, you need to subscribe to view the premium articles. Okay, cool. So this is kind of the bones of our, um, our paywalled news site. Actually, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna hide this console just to give us a little more room. And uh, let's do a hard reload of this page. And after a few seconds, our page loads. In fact, if we look at the timing of this page, you're gonna notice that this page took two seconds to load, and that makes sense because we have to load a bunch of data. The first data we have to load is this uh, load current user. That only takes 10 milliseconds, so that's not really slowing our page down. Uh, but then we load the membership level. Uh, so down here, we load membership level. That takes a second. And then we uh, render premium articles if the user has a premium membership which Bob does, and inside of premium articles, we load premium articles, 
and loading premium articles takes a second. And so because of these two data loading functions, our page is gonna take two seconds to load. Now you might notice something interesting about this. We first load the membership level. And then based off the membership level, we render premium articles. And premium articles is then gonna go and load data. So let's say the membership level was free. It wasn't premium. In that case, we wouldn't be rendering premium articles. And so the page should be faster to load because we don't actually have to load the premium articles. Let's come over here and let's just change our uh, membership level to only user ID two having a premium account. And here we go, we, we get the live reload. We see Bob is now premium. Uh, and if we refresh this page, we're gonna see it now only takes a second to load. So we add an extra second onto our load time just by rendering this premium articles component. And this is one of the problems that comes with tying data fetching to rendering. We don't know what data we need to fetch until we render, uh, but we don't know what to render until we fetch the membership level. And so this right here is known as the dreaded RSC waterfall. You have to fetch some data, then, dis then look at that data, decide what to render, and then based off what you render, you end up fetching more data. So you get this effect of fetch, render, fetch, render, and that can add load time onto your website. And this is a problem with waterfalls. So let's look at how we can use cache to avoid this data fetching and rendering waterfall. I'm gonna come over to our load premium articles function, and I'm gonna change this to use cache. So we're gonna say, let load premium articles equals cache, grab that from React, and uh, we are gonna use an async function here, and it's just gonna have the exact same behavior as before. We're gonna wait a second, and then we're gonna return these two articles. All right, let's save this, and we're gonna reload our page over here. Uh, page tilts took a second, but that's because Bob is on the free account. Let's change our membership level check to look for user ID one. And then now uh, Bob is on premium, we'll do another hard reload. And we're gonna see the page now takes two seconds. But here's where we can use cache to avoid the waterfall. We're gonna come right up to the very first line of our page component and we are gonna call load premium articles. Notice that we're not going to await it, we are just gonna invoke it. Now, when we do a refresh, our page loaded much faster. Uh, we were able to fetch the membership level and all the premium articles and get a render within one second. So how did this work? Well, when our page component started rendering, we immediately called load premium articles, but we didn't block on it. We didn't await it. And we went on and we loaded the current user and we loaded the membership level. And then down here, because Bob is premium, uh, we rendered the premium articles component. And by the time this premium articles component renders, it's gonna invoke load premium articles again. But this time, because load premium articles uses cache, the data from the first invocation was already in the cache. So this didn't have to take a second to load. We didn't have to do the whole thing where we load, render, load, render. The data was already in the cache, already in React's cache, and so it was instantly available, and we were just able to render the premium articles. So this is really, really cool. We were able to sidestep the whole waterfall problem just by preloading the premium articles. Now, one objection you might have to this, you might say, well, look, if, uh, if Bob is on a free account, Let's go ahead and let's change this back to two. Well, isn't this request to load premium articles wasteful? We did some work to load premium articles, but we never ended up using them. For our news website, maybe there's like a 50% chance we're gonna use the premium articles. It's not that big of a deal to load the data and just completely ignore it. The really nice thing about this is, again, we don't await. So when we load premium articles for a free user, it doesn't block the rendering of our page. We only block the rendering of our page when we await load premium articles, but at this point we need to block because we know we need the premium articles. So really, for most apps, other than making an extra network request or database call, there's no harm in preloading data. So I hope you learned something about React and Cache today. And if you like this video, check out my website, buildui.com. We post a whole bunch of videos about React and server components. So again, if you like this video, you're gonna love the content on Build UI. I'll throw a link in the description below to that. But anyway, thanks for watching.
and I'll see you in the next one.